Hello and welcome to a new Detective Squirrel Investigates video. In this video we will be looking at Krakatoa. Around the Pacific Ocean are some of the world's most active volcanoes and in some cases the most explosive. This has given rise to those volcanoes being known collectively as the Ring of Fire. Many of these volcanoes are situated in and around the islands of Indonesia. Between two of the largest islands, Java and Sumatra, runs the Sundar Straits, and at the heart of the Straits lies the island of Krakatoa. The earliest recording recorded uh, volcanic volcano here was an ancient volcano which dist was destroyed in an explosion in 416 AD. But the active area soon built another island and another volcano, a volcano with three craters, a volcano by which by 1883 had been dormant for more than 200 years. So in 1883 for the people of the western coast of Java and the southern coast of Sumatra it was a shock when the sleeping dragon awoke. At the time Java and Sumatra were part of what was called the Dutch East Indies and so were controlled by the Dutch. The locals were basically tenants in their own country. One of the most important cities was the Sumatran city of Ketimbang. The controller of Ketimbang was Willem Berink. In March 1883, there was a number of earth tremors. These tremors were the first warning signs that Krakatoa had awoken from its slumber. Interestingly, jo Johanna Berink, the controller's wife, noticed that her animals, including a pet parrot, were acting strangely. Later she would write a paper on how odd behaviour in animals could be a way to predict volcanic eruptions. It turned out that her findings were backed by Japanese research that had been carried out hundreds of years before on the odd behaviour of koi carp preceding a volcanic eruption. On the island all three craters were erupting but after a few weeks things settled down again and the eruption was erroneously believed to be over. What no one was aware was of a rock plug that had developed during 200 years of dormancy. The eruption in March had left little of the light, lighter lava left in the caldera. This was soon replenished by the darker, heavier, hotter magma from underneath the earth's crust. The mixing of the lava and magma was creating a lot of gas, hot explosive gas. On the 9th of May 18, 1883 a huge tremor was felt. It was a single huge boom at the Ford Point Lighthouse, the lighthouse keeper was looking out towards Krakatoa simultaneously with the loud boom. He witnessed a rare phenomenon. The surface of the sea went perfectly still and flat for a brief moment. The boom was the magma breaking through the earth's crust, causing a, f a force that in essence froze the surface of the sea for a brief moment. 10.30 a.m. on the 20th of May and the eruption begins in earnest. Reports from local fishermen that they were t taking advantage of the bounties of the fertile volcanic seas suggest that the island looked like it was coming apart. More than a hundred ships in the area witnessed the eruption in the Sundar Straits, including the Dutch steamer called the Governor General Ludon under the command of Captain Lindemann. Captain Lindemann's detailed log is a historic document documenting the, uh, the eruption along with the written reports of the controller of Ketimbang and geolo geologists 
Rogier, Verbeek, Sherman and Van der Stock. On the 21st of May, Controller Willem is ordered to the island of Krakatoa for a first-hand investigation. So the next morning, on the 22nd, he heads out with a local fisherman on a small boat. At first they cannot even see the island as they, are, they make their way through the acrid sulphurous smoke that surrounds the island as it chokes them and burns their eyes. Eventually they break through the smoke and see the island. According to the controller of Katimbang, the whole island was on fire and warns of Im that the, the volcano is an imminent danger. But once again an eerie calm leads people to believe once again that the worst is over. Geologists Sherman and Van der Sock travelled to the island of Krakatoa, finding the once forest that stood there, now just charred and smouldering stumps. On Sunday the 26th of August, all three craters of Krakatoa begin erupting simultaneously again. Loud explosions are heard every 10 minutes or so due to the material thrown up by the eruption West Java and Sumatra are plunged into darkness. During the early hours of the following morning around 5.30am on the 27th of August another large explosion from the volcanic volcano. A pyroclastic flow hits the sea causing a tsunami some 130 feet or 40 metres high rushes towards the fourth point lighthouse. The lighthouse keeper shouts to his wife and child to run as he makes his way down the steps but a huge boulder of coral ripped up from the seabed slams into the lighthouse smashing it leaving just the remains of the sturdy base. Miraculously the lighthouse keeper survived, found a lantern and stood on the sea, on the shore, signalling ships. His wife and child were never found. At 10.02 a.m. the entire island explodes in the loudest explosion ever heard by human ears. It is heard in Perth, Australia, some 2,000 miles away, and in the Rodriguez Islands, 3,000 miles away in the Indian Ocean. The shock wave from the explosion travels around the world seven times. The material from the explosion form a huge pyroclastic flow, but unlike the previous flow that hit the water and caused the tsunami, the white hot material instantly turned the surface of the water into, into steam, a cushion of steam that it r rode along the, all the way to the south coast of Sumatra, the drowned landscape of the coast was then scorched. Anyone lucky enough to survive the flood was burnt by the ash and rock. That was soon followed by another tsunami that travelled at more than 60 miles an hour and took just 20 minutes to reach Ketimban. For Willem Bernick, Bernick, Bernick and his family, they managed to climb the nearby Mount Resha Basha. They escaped the tsunami, but not the steam propelled ash cloud that reached even them up the mountain, causing severe burns. The tsunami was funneled up the Lampong Bay to the port town of Telok Betong. The funneling caused the tsunami to increase in height and speed. Its height was estimated to be between 80 and 90 feet more than 20 metres high. It carried the steamship Barut Beru and its 28 crew two miles up the Kuripan River. The ship was carried above the land. According to the conf conflicting reports from the crew, it was between 30 to 60 feet or 9 to 18 metres high above the land. The official death toll was 36,417 
but it's believed that many of the locals who died were not counted in this number. So the true total death toll could be more than 50,000. More than 470 towns and villages were destroyed. The particles of volcanic ash and aerosol in the atmosphere was estimated to cover at least 70% of the Earth's skies, blocking out much of the sun's rays. To such an extent, the global temperature dropped by half of one degree Celsius. It also turned evening skies, even as far as England, blood red. English artist William Ashcroft made a series of oils and colour pencil sketches of the evening sky of the southern England. So as 1883 was before the age of colour photographer, for photography, his work are also of historical interest. The island itself had been obliterated, leaving just a remnant, a remnant called the island of Rakata. Geologists Roger Verbeek published a paper on Krakatoa, including detailed drawings. In December 1927, violent eruptions under the Sundar Straits were the first signs that a new volcano arose at Krakatoa. It grew quickly, at a rate of 15 feet per year, with regular violent eruptions. Volca volcanologists called the volcano an angry teenager, but its true given name was Anak Krakatoa, a name that means child of Krakatoa. In 2012, geologist Raphael Paris warned that one flank of Anak Krakatoa was unstable due to it being built up on the, the rubble of previous eruptions rather than solid rock. In December 2020, just 93 years since it first broke through the surface of the sea, the volcano exploded and indeed the unstable flank gave way. The resultant tsunami led to the death of at least 429, with more than 150 still unaccounted for, and more than 16,000 homes swept away. The eruption of 1883 is the most devastating in human history, with a greater loss of life than any other. There was an attempt at one time, of, there was a theory at one time, of a phenomenon called a water magma bomb where the sea was to have theorised to have rushed into the open crater and reacted with the super hot magma causing the explosion but the remnants of the eruption on the Rakata proved that the theory to be wrong and was in fact caused by a build up of gases caused by the mixing of the lighter lava and the more viscous hot magma in time, a new volcano will arise in the same spot, and at some time in the future, that volcano will suffer a similar, similar cataclysmic, cataclysmic event. In 1968, the American disaster movie Krakatoa East of Java was released, which had a Captain Hansen of the Batavian Queen pearl hunt hunting in the Sundar Straits. The events are very loosely based on the logs of Captain Lindemann of the Governor General Ludon. The film has become particularly well known for its title, as Krakatoa is in fact west of Java, not east of Java. In 2006 we got the BBC made docudrama called Krakatoa The Last Days, starring Rupert Penry Derek Jones as Bering. Of course, for the overdramatic reasons, when shown in America, it was called Krakatoa Volcano of Destruction. In 2008, we got the TV movie docudrama with narration provided by John Shrapnel. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. In the meantime, this is Detective Squirrel out.